Prime Minister Justin Trudeau earlier today commenting on reports out of India that that country wants Canada to reduce its diplomatic staff there significantly, perhaps even by a majority. I want to bring in the front bench to talk about the implications of doing that. With me this evening, former New Brunswick Liberal Premier Brian Gallant. He's now the CEO of Space Canada, Conservative Strategist Kate Harrison, now Vice Chair at Summa Strategies. Gratan Singh is a former Ontario NDP MP, MPP, pardon me, he's now Vice President of, at Crestview Strategy. He's also, we like to say, the brother of federal NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and Toronto Star's Queen's Park Bureau Chief Rob Benzi is here as well. I know that uh, the speak we have a new speaker here. The U.S. is wild things are going on. We're going to talk about that throughout the program. But I did want to start, uh, Garatan, on this issue of Canada-India relations and the way in which it continues to kind of unravel. Uh, how likely do you think it is? I, I noticed that very, the Prime Minister and the Foreign Affairs Minister were very careful in their wording today, not saying, yes, this is for sure happening, just emphasizing they don't want to escalate things any further. How likely do you think it is that India does want this to happen? Well, if we see the track record of India, how they've dealt with this very serious issue, let's just lay it out one time. We have right now, the, the Prime Minister of Canada has said that there's evidence that the Indian government was involved in the murder of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil. This is evidence that has been supported by the Five Eyes, so the intelligence global network that we're part of with the UK, New Zealand, uh, um, UK, New Zealand, Australia, and America. And in addition, we know that the direct evidence that Amer Canada relied upon was supplied by American intelligence agencies. This is very serious allegations put forward against India. I think this you need to pause yourself. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. This is very serious. Uh, these are very serious allegations that are, are being right now put forth against India. And India is not taking it seriously. And instead, India is escalating this matter further by what I'm reading the Financial Times seems to be not a suggestion for these diplomats to leave, but instead mm -hmm. effectively saying that we're kicking out the vast majority of diplomats from India right now. Yeah, very much so. I mean... Also, Rob, it is something that they signaled, right? And something that when we convened a few weeks ago when the news first broke, every, we were talking about the possibility of the implications of this on a, on a diplomatic front just because of the fact that this isn't sort of a, a, a Western adversary as we've come to know China or Russia, for example, but one actually that many countries, including ours until a few weeks ago, was actually pursuing an expanded relationship with. Oh, exactly, Vashi. India is our 10th largest trading partner. Uh, our mission in New Delhi is one of the largest that Canada has abroad. I've been to the to uh, the High Commission there, and it's a very impressive uh, uh, palatial kind of uh, office that we have there, and we have scores of diplomats, and if, they, if India does as good him is mentioning kick out 41 of our uh, of our diplomats that's a huge blow to Canadians who are trying to have who are trying to get together with family over there or trying to do business in India it's a really really big problem but I don't think that the Prime Minister uh, acted lightly I mean this was as, as Gertan mentioned US intelligence that we acted on Kate, how difficult do you think this is for the federal government to navigate? I mean, the seriousness of the allegations that are being made, as both Rob and, and Grotten pointed out, are among the most serious you could level a, against a, a government uh, from a you know a government of another country. At the same time, it is against the backdrop of all these other countries pursuing a, a, an expansion of the relationship with it. Yeah, I, I think. You know, Rob makes a point about the Prime Minister not treating it lightly, and I think that, that that is true. But we have to keep in mind that the path he chose to reveal this information was one of escalation. There is no way that the Indian government would not have responded in the way that they did, given the seriousness of that allegation in the, in the House. They could have, the government could have waited for a Globe and Mail article to come out, uh, as we know that was likely. Uh, what prompted this entire um, admission from the PM. They could have waited, said they were responding, they were aware of the allegations and responding accordingly. But I think that they saw this as an opportunity to change the channel politically. So what we're seeing now is a very predictable escalation from the Indian side. And the ramifications are going to be for Indo-Canadians, 1.3 million, million of them, who might require consular services. Uh, the trade relationship is on hold. Uh, and we're seeing our allies who, to your point, Bashi, 
have a lot of interest in forming a, a stronger relationship with the Indian government, perhaps supporting Canada, but largely doing so quietly. And in the case of the U.S., uh, some mixed messaging over their support of, of Canada on this. So I think we have to keep in mind the prime minister, by virtue of how he disclosed his information and the steps he's taken, escalated the situation. So it's difficult for him to now sit back and say, no, India is the only one that's escalating this affair. I, I certainly take Kate's point, Brian, on the, the consequences. It, it might be a bit harder, though, to, to you know, ascribe motivation with certainly only because I interviewed Bob Fife, who was going to break the story. And his impression was that it might have sped up the quickness with which the government delivered that news, but that they had planned to do so in any event. At the same time, I, I get what Kate's saying. Like, you had to expect to some degree that there was going to be blowback, especially given the way that Modi has and is, is governing. I think if we put ourselves in the shoes of the people in the prime minister's office on that, I think it was a Monday afternoon Wednesday they were sort of discussing or, or maybe it was that morning discussing the fact that a story was about to come out. I think a few things you have to put into context as they would have been discussing how to handle it. Number one, if they were already planning on, on uh, making it be known, uh, as Bob Feist suggested, uh, that's certainly context is important. Second, uh, obviously the context of the story with regards to Chinese interference was was in the background and they're thinking to themselves well this will be perceived as another story that we're sort of sitting on our hands here when something major is happening so we definitely don't want that to happen again i often think that people don't recognize that when there are these types of issues they do have an impact on people that make decisions they, they do take that into context into the next sort of decision that they have to make that might be similar the third thing um, uh, we have to point out that they had already raised it with the Indian government. It's not like this is something that they were breaking that, that India was going to hear for the first time. They had already raised it. And in fact, I'm sure some of them, maybe not all of them, but some of them were probably making the point, look, people are going to start to criticize the fact that it didn't go that well with Modi. It didn't go well at the G20. They don't know the background. They don't know why it didn't go well. It didn't go well because you raised this very serious issue. And the last point I'll make, fourthly, I do think that they, when they came out, the prime minister's goal was certainly not to make it uh, escalate more than it had to, but it was a very serious issue. And why I say that is he raised it, but he said these are these are basically, you know, this is intelligence that we have, we are investigating, it's credible. Uh, he, he went as far as he could without making an accusation. But we've discussed this before, the way that the story has been covered, the way that people have uh, talked about this, it certainly has given the impression on an international scale that uh, that this has been an accusation. So India has jumped on this. Allies haven't really sort of backed Canada completely. They said they're worried. They want the investigation to, to go forward and for India to co cooperate. But since they weren't right behind Canada, India sees an opportunity and are going on the attack. Garatin, uh, last word to you. I, I think certainly the words were chosen carefully, but the way in which the Prime Minister did it in the House of Commons, uh, you got to take your screen off again, in, in the middle of the day. I get, I'm getting these calls. I mean, I'm this, a popular guy. I keep this, on getting these all, calls. I know. I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, the, know, my bad, feel, my bad. I, uh, yeah. I'll just say I was that. just going to say, yeah. no, I just really quickly wanted to make the point that even though the prime minister was careful with his wording, the seriousness of the allegation came across, of course, as an accusation. And, and I think regardless of how careful he was trying to be, there had to be some anticipation of what the ramifications could be. I, I just really think we need to reframe this right now. These are not just, you know, random rumors that the prime minister announced. These are allegations of a Canadian being killed on Canadian soil by a foreign state. This is an attack on Canada's sovereignty that is backed up by American intelligence and the Five Eyes. This is a real substantiated threat that has occurred to Canada. And for the someone to anyone to, for, to suggest that Canada is escalating right now is disregarding the facts. India is the nation that should be participating in a fulsome way in this investigation instead of refusing to participate and now escalating tensions between Canada and India. They're acting like the, the, the spoiled child in the room, frankly. And this is not how you govern in a reasonable and in a serious fashion in the light of these very serious uh, uh, allegations and evidence right now. So I think it's really showing the true colors of India right now on a national scale. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to ultimately have a negative impact on their geopolitical relations, potentially with other nations as well.